Scooters are incredible personal transport vehicles. They are comfortable, convenient, spacious, and effective. The only problem is, is that these little shopping carts are boring. But that was before. Nowadays, scooters are efficient and sharp looking. Gone are the days of the boxy scooters and the two stroke platforms that sings ring ding ding ring ding ding. When two of the biggest motorcycle manufacturers in Asia designed their scooters, they create an entry level boring scooter. Pareha sila ang 150cc and walang halos difference ang dalawa when it comes to power. Yes, I know 155cc si Aerox but regardless, it's a 150cc class pa rin. Huwag ka ng kamote na pinaglalaban ng 5cc difference. Since they are both the same, it's, it's all differs in terms of feel and quality. So dito ako magpo-focus rather than top speed bullshit dahil hindi ka naman nagkakarera sa streets. I'll quickly review both scooters then compare them afterwards. Let's start with the Yamaha Aerox. Currently, this is the second generation Aerox already. The first generation was an only available in other countries and it was an awkward looking scooter. Fast forward today and the Aerox is mad looking scooter. It has this sex appeal that even big bike owners would want to own as their daily driver. The Aerox uses its elder siblings platform which is the Yamaha NMAX. It's the same chassis, same engine, same compartment size, etc. Except for the wheel size and the tire. The NMAX platform is already successful on its own. It's the first small displacement motorcycle or scooter to have ABS in Southeast Asia. But the fans want more. The platform is successful which means Yamaha can recycle this platform to another and still sell more. So they revision the machine with uh, the eagerness of sport bike but retaining the usability of a scooter. This proves that Yamaha's designer did a great job in designing a bike to look fresh. Hindi na naluluma and it's a good thing that everlasting it thought and even the owners themselves would be proud to look at it. Even big bike owners want to keep one for their everyday commute or if they simply want to go near places. Even I want one as a second motorcycle. The Aerox uses a larger 14-inch wheel for agility coupled with fat sporty tires, 110 by 60 on the front and 140 by 70 on the rear, which provides a bigger contact patch and better cornering. The sporty tires lets you lean even further if you even have the balls to do so. And even if you do, the center stand will hit the ground first and it's dangerous unless you remove it.
system to manage and produce power efficiently. But the downside of this engine on a scooter is that it consumes too much fuel for a 150cc class scooter. The engine pulls strong on the low and mid ranges producing 14.7 horsepower and 13.8 Nm torque as early as 6000 RPM and the exhaust note produces a growling sound yet it is can fit two helmets if you can, fits your motorcycle gear and rain equipment, fits groceries too. You can make it a mini pool for your child or you can use it as a large ice bucket for beer. Click 150 The Click or also known as the Vario series in Indonesia where it is manufactured goes back to 2006 from its first generation where it is started out as a 108cc until today's 150cc version. Here in the Philippines we have the 1C5 and the 150cc versions which offered 4 years ago. At that time it was one of the most attractive, reliable and fuel efficient scooters which why it gained the popularity from the scooter community. Fast forward today and the updated click looks more elegant especially with the matte red color scheme. I was one of the first to own the updated Click 150 and got the matte red version because it was elegant and the fit and finish was good for a scooter. With taken care of and without changing or modifying any parts, the Click is one of the most pleasant scooters to look at with its elegant styling. The Click uses the same 14 inch wheel size as from the previous version. Front tire size is the same but the rear tire uses 100 by 80 and uses a more stickier tire para mas makapit unlike before. Maraming cases nang nadudula sa previous stock tire. Suspension on the front is tuned for soft damper and rebound. I love how it feels dahil para kang lumulutang sa kalsada. It feels like a mid-size executive sedan. You can't feel the road, any other slight pumps sa sobrang ganda ng tuning. The rear suspension uses a side-mounted monoshock that is also tuned on the softer settings. Overall, para kang nakasakay sa Honda Accord, it's just that compliant. The engine is an age-old tradition, tried and tested, reliable, quiet and smooth. The engine is improved on since 2006 and it is one of the smoothest scooter engines that I have ever experienced. Halos walang vibration even if you travel for more than 200 kilometers. It produces 13 horsepower late at 8,500 RPM but the 13.4 Nm of torque comes as early as 5,000 RPM which, which gives you a good stop and go sensible power to crawl the city. Yes, it does not have that much power but the balanced engine can provide you a staggering 52 km per liter average or more. I have hit this number many times already and by judging the, by the fuel efficiency of this vehicle you can tell that this is one of the most refined 150cc scooter engines available. It pulls strong on the low and mid ranges as there is where all the power is tuned. 
go beyond that and the power turns vague. Personally, I managed to hit 115 km per hour only, but it can go as far as 120 if you wait like a stick. This scooter is pretty much designed for everyday use. Power is settled for practicality rather than trying to pretend what it is not supposed to be. It's at home at the city. Yung design niya ay napaka-elegant, especially the matte red. Hindi nakakasawa tignan ito, especially from the rear. The form factor is just nice. It's also nice to touch dahil ang plastic quality ay top-notch. Even the switch gear and handlebar, everything is above Honda standards. The overall weight of this scooter is 113 kilograms and the chassis is still the same as before. It does not provide the stiff rigidity of a max scooter frame but with a step board on the front you have a lot of space to move about and you can also use the space for storage. The under seat compartment might not be large enough but with a step board you can place huge backpacks, groceries, sack of fries, etc. Now let's compare the two. Both scooters has their pros and cons so let's begin. First the engine. The Aerox has the Pepe LC4V motor that loves to be a rev. It growls and has a tractable power band even on the top end which provides better feel but the problem is that no matter how much Yamaha boasts their blue core technology it consumes gas as if it was a 200cc. The Click on the other hand has one of the most refined scooter engines. It's quiet, smooth, practical and super fuel efficient. However, it is too pragmatic. It feels like an e-bike. It's too quiet that you would somehow feel bored with the engine when you feel like going for a spirited ride. But if you go long distance touring, boring and easy is what you need. But don't expect any sporty character with this engine. Second, form factor. The Aerox has that sporty aura that makes everyone appreciate the machine. It's huge and may be hard to squeeze on some traffic scenarios, but with the backbone maxi frame, it is as stable as a naked bike. The click, on the other hand, shows its elegance. It has this shape that represents premium, even the headlight is accompanied by a DRLs that make you existent even on dark roads for safety. The scooter is compact and easy to use on traffic, but with its conventional scooter chassis, it lags behind on handling feel, and with the existence of a 125 version, it somehow kills the premium factor dahil kahit saan ka nakalingon, parang lahat may click na, nawawala yung premium feel. Third, storage and practicality. The Aerox is a scooter but has no step board in exchange of a stiff frame. This eliminates the space on the front but you can still place a bag on it. Under the seat is where you can find all the storage. You can get the same amount of boot space on the NMAX. The Aerox can do 40 km per liter if driven on a sedated manner. And you can go lower when you go wild wild mode which is the only downside of the Aerox itself. Everything is great about the Aerox besides its fuel efficiency. The click has a step board and this makes it practical as an object mover. The space under the seat is not that glorious but it is enough to place your daily items like a rain gear and all. The click can be driven hard all day and you can still get 47 km per liter all the time and you, this can go higher if you drive it on a sedative manner. The Aerox is a sporty 150cc class scooter and it provides the feeling of performance and power para matanggal yung idea na boring on scooter. That is the Aerox character. The Click is an elegant 150cc class scooter. It provides the contemporary scooter practicality but when elegant and premium looks. This eliminates the idea na little shopping carts lang on scooter. It can also be as elegant and quiet like a Maxi scooter. Thank you for watching and if you like this video please do like, share and subscribe for more for more content every week. Cheers.